when was your aha moment to quitting drinking and how long have you been sober? Um, well, I, I tried quitting kind of back in 2019, huh? but then, um, I don't know. I just said, you know, COVID-19 happened and it was like, ah, screw it. The world's ending. That was kind of my feeling. I'm like, the world's ending. I'm just going to get screwed up. So then, you know, I got drunk for pretty much four years straight. And then okay. finally I was just like, I, I don't know. I, it, it was like a bunch of things that kind of connected. And then finally I was just like, I'm done. And, uh, I'd say the first, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of stuff that happened, but, uh, I have a friend who got into bodybuilding and he like turned his whole life around in like six months, like got super shredded and stuff, but I knew he didn't drink. And so that was like the first step. So I was like, well, if I want to get into that, I should probably stop drinking. And that was like what kind of made me, well, motivated myself to just stop drinking. So you are into CrossFit, right? Yeah. So since you quit, have you been doing CrossFit since you quit drinking? I mean, uh, yeah, no, I've been drinking. Yeah, I've been doing CrossFit for like almost 10 years. Um, but the drinking never helped. <laughs> so like, it's pretty, pretty. You notice the difference? Uh, well, I don't know if do you work out in the mornings or. I work out in the evenings. When I first started, I was working out in the mornings. And then I started working out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's I, I prefer the evenings. Yeah. Well, and then when you were drinking through those COVID years. Yeah, it was a joke. It was so hit miss. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Getting up and going to work. I mean, because I used to train at a gym or like I was the trainer. And I'd have to be there at five for a class. And oh my gosh, there were so many mornings that I was like, I don't know how I'm doing this when I look back. Yeah. And then I would just like sweat my workout or sweat my alcohol out. And I'm like, people have to smell me. Like looking back, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like, I I noticed there's two, there's like a different type of sweat. Like I don't have that hangover sweat anymore. <laughs> like if you, like I remember Mondays would be the worst days. Cause like I have this, I don't know how to describe it. It was like a beer sweat. Yeah. It was you... so weird, but I don't have that anymore. I mean, I know I don't even sweat as much as I used to. Yeah. I yeah. You used to like sweat a lot on Mondays. Yeah. yeah. Bad. It's just detoxing our body. It was so bad. And like my performance was terrible. Like on Mondays, I would always call it the Monday hangover workout. But, like, looking back, I'm like, that was so unnecessary. Yeah. Like, I don't need to do that. And did, like, so you're in a group at CrossFit. And I know, I mean, there's so many boxes all around. And I've only tried CrossFit probably five times in my life. Yeah. yeah um, is it kind of a drinking party or not a drinking it, crowd? I, I think it depends. It, I think it depends on which box you go to. Um, some are pretty heavy in drinking and then others are like no like not drinking at all and um i would say the boxes i went to were pretty heavy in drinking uh but everyone does crossfit because they want to look good and they want to perform well and stuff and at the end of the day i've discovered yeah like drinking is the worst thing you could do but it's just not good so are you, how old are you? I'm 33. 33. So, uh, you're still, I mean, in my early thirties, I was drinking a lot. Um, but so you notice, do you notice a huge difference in your body since you quit drinking? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I've already, I was starting to get like a beer belly, even though I like, even though I worked out like all week, it beer just. Yeah, I was scanning a beer belly. I stopped drinking and like that's like I lost that all. Yeah. Like it's nice. Yeah. I look back at the pictures and people always want to like, I don't know, like people would pick their trainers out by the way they looked. And 
But when people, I, when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did they want me? Because it looked like I had a beer belly. When I look back, I'm like, that's so gross. Yeah. And I always, I always felt bloated and just like really gassy too. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. So I saw that you, you drink NAs, right? Have you been drinking them yeah. since the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah. I, that was, um, well, uh, before I quit, I was kind of experimenting. I was buying a pack of normal beer and a pack of non-alcoholic beer. And so I was kind of like, during the weekdays, I would have one non-alcoholic beer and then I'd drink my normal beers. And then eventually, I don't know, over time, eventually I was just like, you know what? I kind of enjoy the non-alcoholic beer because I'm not, I'm not feeling any different. So... Oh. Eventually, it gave me like the confidence to just say, screw it. I'm just going to start drinking the non alcoholic beer. And then that first night was really weird because I drank like a six pack of non alcoholic beer and I wasn't getting buzzed. And at first, that was like, first time was really, really weird. I was just like, I don't know if I like this, but I. So, do you feel like you drink them? like you drank beer like for instance i have a, i've had a six pack of heineken in my uh, zero, heineken zero in my yeah. fridge since valentine's day and i well, think that's i the drank worst. two <laughs> and like usually i it would take me uh an hour two hours to pull yeah, off a six yeah. pack and i don't even get through one without dumping it out yeah no it my drinking habits have totally changed like uh I still drink non non alcoholic beer, but it takes about a week to go through a pack of beer. Yeah. So like because it's not addictive. Mm -hmm. So like I drink the one beer, like it's enough to like satisfy the taste. But you know I don't get the buzz or anything, but I still like the taste. I do like the taste of beer. I so that's that's what I've been looking for. It's the taste because a lot of people yeah. like, give you pushback on. Well, you shouldn't want um want NA drinks and blah blah blah. But if you were a beer drinker, to me, like I like the hop water. I haven't tried an NA IPA because I can't find. I tried one. They're pretty good. Yeah. It's it's so weird. The IPAs are really weird because you drink it and it tastes just like an IPA, but you don't get drunk, which is yeah. And you, it's really, it's really trip. You're just like this is so weird. Yeah. But it is you. You look for the taste, like, and that's why I'm big on mocktails and all these, like, sp like. So we drink a lot of Trulies and White Claws. I, I drink everything. So like the sparkling or the soda waters and stuff, those remind me of White Claws and Trulies. And sometimes they actually make me like, I can't drink them because they taste too similar. Yeah. And then I wasn't ever a domestic beer drinker, so. But I do do the hop waters because they taste like IPAs. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's refreshing. That one tastes like a hazy IPA, like the mango hop water um, I get from Boise Co-op. But I think if you like it for the taste, that's different than just like completely. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say like, yeah. that for the taste versus just a substitute to think that it's going to help you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, I I I. I mean, when I first started drinking beer, I didn't like the taste, like pretty much everyone. But um, over time, by the time I wanted to quit, I still liked the taste of beer. It's just I started hating the negative side effects. Like I wasn't trying, at the end of it, I wasn't drinking beer to try to get drunk. Well, my tolerance, my tolerance was getting so high, I was drinking a six pack of beer every night and I wasn't getting drunk, but I felt like crap the next day. Yeah. So it just, to me, it was like the non-alcoholic beers just make sense. I just, I drink that. But now it's to the point where I could just have one and I'm good. Like, that's all I need. You satisfy that taste. So did you notice, or were you a heavy drinker? I would say so. I mean, I was, the last few years, I was really bad. I was drinking, um... Uh, my bare minimum was a six pack of 16 ounce canned beers every night. Oh, tall boys. Yeah. But that was my bare minimum. So 
Um, if I wasn't drunk after that, I would, I would drink more. Yeah. So I would find myself finishing a six pack and then going to the store, or yeah. my husband go to the store, and or and, and, and I'd buy like a tall boy or some. So sometimes there's a six pack, then like a tall boy or two tall boys, mm. and then next thing you know, next thing you know, it was like two a.m. in the morning. You're like, oh great, I gotta get up next morning. It was terrible. So brutal. I like people make like comments and I'm just like, dude, I have no desire to drink ever again because like it makes me cringe at the thought of all those times I had to wake up in the morning and be functional. No. And I don't know how I functioned half the time now because I have a hard time functioning not drinking. Like, yeah. how did I do yeah. that drinking? Yeah, it was nuts. Or like on the weekend, I'd buy a 12 pack of 16 ounce cans. That that would be gone easily that day. Yep. And I'd always, in the back of my mind, every time I'd do it, I'd be carrying it out of the store. I'm like, man, this is a lot of liquid. Like, that's a lot of liquid. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, what's funny is I still feel, I don't know. I feel like people are watching me in the, in the alcohol aisle now. But before I quit drinking, I was embarrassed about drinking alcohol. And now I'm embarrassed just being in the alcohol no i don't know it's it's a mind thing i had the opposite uh, i wasn't embarrassed when i drank but now when i look on it like oh man that was so embarrassing there'd be times there'd be times where i went to like the same like gas station like three or four times a day they didn't even care i was like now that i look back and i'm like man they probably knew like i had a problem <laughs> but i didn't i didn't think about that i mean there was days that i would go in at like noon uh to the gas station or wherever and buy some beer and they'd be like getting starting early huh and i was like oh that's so terrible yeah i had no shame i would i'd just be like uh it's saturday 8 a.m i don't care just buy a beer <laughs> like it's normal <laughs> right? or i remember catching myself waiting so in oregon i don't think you could buy liquor until 7 a.m i don't oh. or like I went in for mimosas, and I walked around the store until it was seven o'clock in the morning. I don't know what oh. <laughs> whatever the time is. I I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, um, I know that a lot of. I'm sure you knew times. You had like a plan. Yeah, but or the liquor store doesn't open till eleven. What are we What are we gonna do yeah. then? What's insane <laughs> is what's insane is um, like now that I haven't been drinking and don't plan on drinking, like ever again is that like my life doesn't revolve around drinking anymore which is crazy like everything was planned around drinking yeah it's just weird i feel like i have you have you seen the movie the matrix uh i mean long time ago well you know i feel like i've gotten out of the matrix and then you see what other people are doing you're just like so weird Yes, I love how you bring that up because it's so true. Our life did revolve around alcohol. Everything like, when are we going to drink next? How? What are we going to drink? Where are we going to drink? And the logistics, like how are we going to get home? Yeah, and the, like you, and then you stop drinking and you see this world around you of drunks and it's disgusting almost. And not that it's just because we were in their shoes one time. Yeah. And yeah. And that's why I can say, like, that's gross and makes me cringe. But it's total freedom. Like, it's total freedom. I get to drive anytime, anywhere I want. Like, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's just so, I don't know. It's like, I didn't realize how freeing it would be. That, yes. But it's, Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because I think that's, like, something that a lot of us don't talk about enough is how freeing it is. Well, yeah. It's just like, you not only that, but I, I I find that like I'm awake all the time on weekends. When I would drink, I would there was a point where like I'd pass out for a few hours and then wake back up and then I'm like, Oh, I'm sober. I gotta drink again. And I'd start drinking again and then pass out again. It's just like what like now I could just do anything like I can just be like, Oh, I gotta go grocery shopping. I just hop in the car, go grocery shopping, don't even have to worry about it. Yeah. Or, you know, if an emergency comes up, I have to fix something, realize I don't have a tool, I just be like, oh, hey, I could drive to Home Depot, get a tool or what, like, I just like, do whatever I need to do. Yeah, like. You just say you fixed your toilet. Yeah, the toilet was broken. Fix that. 
but it's just like it's just or if you go to like a get together or a party and you're not feeling it you can leave yeah like you're not stuck there there's been so many times where like i would go to a party i didn't like it but i was already drunk and then you're like well might as well just get drunker yes and then what are you supposed to do then you just have to like pass out over there or you're just stuck there it's just yeah. terrible yeah it is definitely we went to a or you get stuck at a bar and then next thing you know like you get kicked out or drama starts happening because you just like you become a prisoner wherever you're at yeah that's it's just true. like you just can't leave oh oh my gosh all the, and then like as a female trying to get an uber from like downtown i mean you know like one time it was downtown boise to meridian by the water park yeah and i was like terrified being in an uber at, at one o'clock in the oh, morning I'm sure the mail driver and i'm like why would i do this to myself yeah that's I can go and I can drag him myself. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing, like, as a man, it was a completely different experience because I'm a dude. Yeah. But, like, I couldn't even imagine what that environment would be like if you're a woman. Like, that's terrible. But they know they know that you're wasted. And yeah. I mean, obviously, like, I'm sure there's things that happen. But, I mean, luckily, I never had to take an Uber too many times. But, uh, yeah, no, there's some... You get in situations when you're drinking yeah. too much that, you know, now that looking back, you're like, holy crap, I can actually drive my car there and drive my car home and get yeah. safe. Not even have to worry. Yeah, worry about it. Other thing, too, is I know it's like saving a shitload of money. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. I, I, did the, I did the math. I think I was spending probably over $200 a week on beer. Easily. Just like, well, that's just that's just you. Imagine, yeah. having a house or like, times two. Yeah, it's disgusting. Or going out to dinner with friends now, or I don't know if you have a girlfriend or whatever. But now it's uh, it's like fifty to eighty bucks versus yeah, a hundred to a hundred and eighty. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I it, I remember I think it was like the second weekend I stopped drinking. Um, some friends wanted to go to a local bar. I'm like, well like okay that was like my first test where i i didn't drink at the bar and um i had a dr pepper oh i think and they ran out of dr pepper so i only had one dr pepper but then like i left as i was as we we're leaving my friend's tabs were like all twenty dollars forty dollars i got mine it was two bucks and i was like okay i'm hooked i'm like i'm i'm freaking good I, I'm not drinking again. <laughs> so you're saying like I, to go to the bar with your friends and see the difference in the tabs. Oh, my gosh. It'll be eye-opening. I felt so accomplished. I was like, uh, I'm so happy I didn't drink. Oh, my gosh. I went when my dad and my uncle were here. I, I don't know. I was just not in a good mood that day because it was a long day. But we ended up going to the curb bar and grill for lunch after the water park. And they were ordering drinks, and then I paid I paid the bill, and I was like, I don't pay for alcohol anymore. Oh no, it's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they ended up paying for other things, but I was just like, seeing that bill just made me like cringe because I was like, this would not have been this expensive if there weren't drinks flowing. And now, gosh, how did I do this so often? Because so many times, that's what Jonathan and I would do on the weekends is we would go hit up you know new places and just drink and now i can go and i mean i love mocktails like virgin margaritas are by far my fave like i don't know i know i mean i i like i'm still drinking non-alcoholic beer i didn't think i'd stick with it but i mean i work do you order it at re do you order it at restaurants uh i mainly just stick with dr pepper okay it's good enough i do they have not how I call it beer restaurants now. Some do. I mean, I pref I wish they would like put them on draft, but I mean, yeah, I'm I'm fine with Doctor. I like Doctor Pepper. Yeah. Um, I don't drink pop, so I'm. We just no. I at home though. I drink the zero sugar. Okay. Oh, which is 
pretty good. So what has been your biggest, uh, like, your biggest, what is the time looking for? Um, like, what's been the hardest moment since you've been sober? Um, I, I would say, yeah, I would say the hardest part is this so is, you know, friends inviting you to places and then you, you have to just remind yourself, well, it's going to be different. I, like that, that. I, I would say that was the hardest part. Like, you know, I, like that first weekend where my friends were like, hey, let's go to the bar. That was like, I, I almost didn't like want to go. I'm like, uh, hang on a second. Turn on my light. No, I, I almost didn't want to go because I was afraid that I was going to start drinking again. But I told myself, I'm like, no, I'm like, I should be able to go and just have like a Dr. Pepper or something. Like another beverage that I like that's not alcoholic. Yeah. So I, I stuck with that. But it was it was different. Uh, I mean, I, I would say I had a good time still. Mm-hmm. Like um, I was still able to have fun and stuff. My friends gave me shit. But that only, yeah, that only lasted for, you know, a couple of minutes. And then once they got drunk, they didn't care. So once they real, so they were supportive once they realized that you were serious about this. Yeah, mo- for the most part, yeah. And they still include you in everything. Probably not everything, but um, I still hang out with them, as you know, when they when I have the opportunity to. Yeah. So your friends haven't really shifted too much. No, I mean, because most all my friends do CrossFit, so there's still that that active. Part. So, but you're getting the results and they're taking slower to get the results. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> does your instructor drink? Um, He does. I think, I don't know. I um, We'll see. I hung out with them last night and I noticed a lot of them weren't drinking as much as they used to. So I don't know if that was something that I had an impact on or something like that. Because I do. How that works. I do know for a fact that they, a lot of my friends, I mean, you know, no one likes the hangovers. No. You know? No. And so you didn't drink enough to have like withdrawals, but you did have a lot of hangovers, obviously. No. I didn't have withdrawals, but um, I think back in 2019, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I think. Back in 2019, I think I felt some of the withdrawals, but that would only last for like a day or two. Because back in 2019, I tried doing, uh, I tried controlling it. So what I do is I would only drink on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem with that is the problem with that is I would binge drink, so I would have like a really massive hangover for Monday and Tuesday, and like. Um, I could tell my body didn't like that at all. I I think is a lot of people. Like I would have the shakes really bad on like the Mondays and Tuesdays. And I was like, yeah, that, that didn't work. So then, so then when the pandemic hit, I'm like, ah, screw it. Like I'm just going to drink whatever. And then that, um, so I don't know. I, I think I kind of, this time around, I kind of like slowly got off of the beer like with the non-alcoholic beer, I knew like going cold turkey probably wasn't the best idea because I knew how that felt. So I just kind of like float it. Yeah. I guess I want to go back to the um, the weekends. I feel like yeah. a lot of people are like, I'm going to cut back and then, but I'm only going to drink on the weekends. But yeah, then you end up binge drinking on the weekends yeah. and then you are hungover for at least the hangover was way worse yeah it's because then you're waking up saturday morning drinking away your hangover and then sunday you're drinking away your hangover and then you're like crap monday comes and you're like double hangover yeah and then it just rolls with you especially the older we get like they don't they're not easy to deal with and i I don't care who you are if you don't get a hangover you don't i mean yeah i don't even know i well, and the thing, too, is I think I looked it up. I think they say binge drinking is a lot more damaging on your body than just, like, keeping a steady inflow of 
Like I found that to be true. Like um, when I would binge drink on the weekends, it was a lot harder on my body than if I just like stuck with the six beers a night. Yeah. As weird as that sounds, it was kind of like, it was kind of like a steady flow rather than like being sober all week. And then like, boom, like I would just get like blackout drunk on the weekend. And that was just terrible. It is. Because you wait, you build up that like anticipation for Friday. Yeah. Like, Here we go. Going to the liquor store and the store. Going to get the liquor and all the other stuff. Yeah. And then it's going to be one big party for three full days. Or and I just I just had too many embarrassing moments to where I'm just like, I don't want to. Like, I'm just tired of embarrassing myself. <laughs> what kind of drunk were you? Um, I was a goofy, dr- uh, goofy drunk. But... You know, there comes that point in time where you just get sloppy and dumb. Yeah. And you're just like, this isn't working with the women. Like, the women just, you know. Not- yeah, they, they just, like, there's that point in time where just, this isn't cool anymore. Like, you're trying to impress them because you're drunk, but then it's, like, the total opposite. <laughs> yeah, total opposite. Or you're trying to be funny, but you're just an idiot. And it just, I don't know, it started, it just, I just start coming off as just like, incompetent and dumb, you know? <laughs> like, oh, there's, there's dumb, goofy Max, like, just being drunk and stupid. It's just Max again. Yeah. I got that. I've been <laughs> not, like, trying to impress people, but, like, I just was always the one that's like, well, it's just Megan. She'll pass out here soon. Yeah. So yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. And then I was, I'm a mom, so it's even, like worse because i'm like oh i'm that mom yeah well even i i'm single don't have kids or single anything like that but like it doesn't help when you're single and you know because people just look at you like ah he just has no future you know yeah it's just like single and ready to mingle but i mean uh, yeah like (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh i know so many guys that I, throughout my life that have been single and you just see them and I'm like you're not gonna get any girl acting that way <laughs> yeah yeah but I have no room to talk but at least I wasn't trying to find somebody but yeah oh I my just, gosh I don't know. I've just had too many uh embarrassing moments uh, mm-hmm. one of them yeah one of them actually it it became widespread and known and um it really sucked so it was uh, back in, it was during the pandemic, 2020. And because um, I think like that first month, everything was locked down, you know, mm-hmm. and there was like nothing going on at all. And I still remember it was like after a month of the lockdown, I, I don't even, it's hard to remember everything because I was so drunk, but uh, I was too. There was this one, this one lady I met on a dating app. It didn't mesh. It didn't work out between us. But, like, we were still friends. And she's like, hey, I have a friend that might be interested in you. I was like, okay, sweet. Like, she invited me over to a party. And um, I don't know how to describe it. I was just like, it was one of those weird situations where there was nothing going on for, like, two months straight. And, like, I just wanted a freaking party. Like, yeah. Because the only people that I was, I was hanging out with was my, my parents, my brother, and his girlfriend. And that was it. So it was like four people. That was like my social circle for like two months straight, not doing anything else. So I was just like, I want a freaking party with new people so bad. So I go to her house, get obliterated. And, um, just you and her, or was there a party? Yeah, it was a party. And then afterwards, got obliterated, spent the night with her. Um, and I just remember waking up in the morning, farting in her bed, and she got really mad about it. <laughs> At least you didn't pee her bed. No, I, mean... I farted. She got really mad and kicked me out. And somehow, I don't know how, somehow that story got leaked to everyone. Like everyone knows about it. Oh. So now it's different. like, yeah, so now it's like, oh, Max, oh, yeah, you're farting in women's beds. Small town, small town gossip. Yeah. I 
I'm like, how did that even happen? I think I finally found out like a few weeks ago how that spread. It was like a friend of a friend of a friend who knew me. And then it just like, I was, in, I was impressed that it got out. I'm like, how, how did that story spread? Like, yeah. That, that is awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, obviously she was like too prissy maybe. Like, yeah. If she's offended by her farts. I mean, you don't want to like yeah, I was somebody that's so easily offended. <laughs> I, I don't know what, well, yeah, I don't know what. I'm sure that, maybe there was other things. and There was probably other things. That's the problem because I was drunk. I don't remember most of it, but I just remember that was like the straw that broke the Campbell's back. We farting in your bed and then she got pissed off. So you stopped talking to her for good? Yeah, I did. Oh, man. Like she was so, she actually took my keys and threw them at me. Like that's how mad she was. What? Oh my gosh. Get out of my house. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, being but, does weird things. Yeah. It just, it was one of those things. I, I don't, yeah, it was just weird. Proud but, moment, right? <laughs> it's nothing. We're not being, yeah. uh, do So, your background, do your parents drink and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. How? Well, I feel like, I feel like uh, my dad's, he, he, he's always been able to like control it. Okay. Like he's one of those, he's one of those people where like he'll have like one, he could have like one beer and he's good. I, I don't know how he they, does. Do they call that a normie? I think they call that. Probably. A... I don't know how you do that. I, I was never, I was never able to do that. Mm. If I had one beer, I'm like, got to get a six pack. And then after the six pack, it's like. I gotta have four. Like yeah. I, if if there was a twelve pack of beer, or if there was, that's why I never bought like a thirty pack of beer. Because if there was ever a thirty pack of beer, I was gonna drink that whole thing no matter what. Like I was one of those people. It's just like I have to keep drinking until it's all gone. Same, me too. So camping though, you went camping. Uh, I remember you told me you went camping. Um, was camping usually just a drunk fest, and now you go camp well, October? I never really have gone. I don't camp that much. Uh, um, you don't try to find Sasquatch? No. No. no, no, no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, I, I don't go camping that much. The, uh, I went camping a few weeks ago, but that was I was sober. That was fine. And then I went camping one time when I was in high school. I was sober then. Oh, um, only I've only gone camping one time, and that was for a friend's bachelor party, and we got wasted. And um, I don't know if that was a fun time or not. Because uh, woke up. Here's one thing that's scary. I woke up the next morning, and I had like a massive like gash on the side of my face. I don't remember how it happened. You know, so and I was like. Uh I went back to work and my manager was like, holy shit. He's like, did you get punched in the face? I'm like, I don't know. Cause I went on this camping trip. I got blackout drunk. I don't even know what happened, which is scary. You're just kind of like, what the, what the hell? Yeah. I've had many of those. Uh, when did you start drinking? Uh, I remember the first time I drank. How old were you? I think I was like 16. Typical age. Yeah, my my brother was drinking age, and I was hanging out at his house, and he was like, "You're gonna drink tonight, okay?" And then uh, I had a was that a screwdriver? Oh, <laughs> oh so high school it was Malibu rum and Sunny D. <laughs> Everybody is like, "Yeah, it was a screwdriver," and I remember it was like yesterday. I I I was have like I was drinking, and I'm like, "This is so gross." I'm like, "Why?" Like. I hated it. I'm like, this is dumb. Like, this is what you guys do. And then all of a sudden it hit. Like, the buzz started coming. And I'm like, oh, like, no. I feel good. <laughs> I'm ready to party. And then that was my first. I didn't like that was probably my first and only time I drank in high school. And then. Uh, That's good, though. Yeah, I, I, I was one of those people who 
continue to drink. I, that was just like the first time I got drunk. And then I'd say I didn't start really drinking until I was like 19 or 20 after high school. And then, um, and then I hit 21. It was, yeah. Yeah. The card game on. on. Yeah. Game on. Then it was just beer every freaking night. <laughs> So from 21 to 33, 33. So you, yeah. I'm, I know you've told me before, but how long have you been sober? Uh, this is going to be three months, three months. Yeah. So this is the most I've been sober since like high school. Oh, wow. Wow. Good for you. And you, so you're fine being around drinking. You're fine being around people drinking and your friend circle hasn't really changed because I know a lot of people like that's the that's the hardest part though I, I, I I've been able to like go through it but I can understand why people can't because it's hard mm-hmm. I think I'm at that point where I don't care anymore but at the very beginning it was like oh man like that beer looks so good yeah and it's like it's like torture you know so you just changed your mindset one day and you're like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember the morning I was hung over and I was driving to work. I think it was like on a Wednesday or Thursday. I was driving to work and I was just like, like, this is the day. Like, I'm done. And it just stuck. Yeah. I'm just like, I, I don't want to feel like this anymore. And so that I remember that whole day I kept reminding myself, I'm like, I'm just going to buy a pack of non-alcoholic beer and drink that. And then I remember that night, it was so weird. I was like, thinking, it was so weird. I was just like, I was almost getting frustrated. I'm like, I've had two beers, not drunk. What the fuck? Like, what? I'm going to drink another one. And then I'm like, by the fourth one, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, this fourth one's not going to get me drunk. I was just like, this is so ridiculous. Like, what am I doing? It was almost like, it almost woke me up to the, like, absurdity of it. I don't know, like the the weirdness of it. Yeah. Like, so I absolutely love that. You just like, because a lot of people are like, it's harder than, I mean, I did 75 hard, obviously. Everybody knows this and I apparently preach about it. But um, like, it just does take a mindset shift. And I wish more people would realize that if you put the work into it and you say, I don't want to drink. And then you start telling people around you, like, I'm done drinking. Then hopefully they'll start supporting you. And then it just helps you, like, in your decision to quit drinking. And, like, it wasn't you didn't tell yourself you were going to take a break. You told yourself you were quitting, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. I was just like, I'm the the main focus for me was I just didn't want to feel hung over anymore. And I, and I, and I've already tried. I remember back in 2019, I tried controlling it, and I knew that wasn't going to work. So controlling it doesn't help. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. I already knew that because I've already tried it and I wanted to get rid of the hangovers. So like it, when I thought it all through, I was just like the main conclusion was I just had to stop drinking. OK, and, so um, I want to go back to the uh, you said controlling it doesn't help. What is controlling it to you? Well, like, like I, I tried doing the whole, oh, I'll be sober throughout the week and then drink on the weekends. Okay. I just didn't work. And then the and then the the last few years, I was like, well, I'm just going to stick with the six pack. Spare minimum. Just doesn't work. I don't know. Like it just, I just felt like crap no matter what. You yeah. know. And are you the type that if you were to have a beer or whatever drink of any sort, would would it take you back down? Do you think? I don't think so because I I have um I think the first month or the second month I did have a random beer here and there, and um this is one thing I didn't mention um, I had a random beer here and there and I think my taste buds have already changed because I could taste the alcohol and it was it wasn't good. I can smell it like I can yeah smell I feel people like I can smell cigarette smoke now like yeah. I hate cigarette smoke I've never been a smoker. And now I can smell beer or liquor. And I'm like, dude, she had a drink or he's wasted. Like you can smell it on them. So yeah, I don't, you know. I can't really smell it, but um, I would have 
not what happened. Uh, like, I had, like, I'd say that after the first month I was sober, I had a single Coors Light, and it tasted radically different what from I what I, well, I know, but this is the weird thing. It was light beer, right? But it, but I could taste the alcohol in it. Like, it tasted, it didn't taste as good as I remember it. I have done a few, uh, like. So it was weird. It was like, it was like my taste buds have already changed. Just like I don't, en- yeah, I don't enjoy it like I used to, and my tolerance is so high. I, I don't get drunk off of it, so it's just like drunk off Coors Light. Well, yeah, yeah. That was well, my choice of that's a, yeah, exactly. That was my choice of beer in high school. That's what everybody drank. Or PBR. I, I love PBR. Yeah, yeah, that was really nasty stuff, but it got the job done. It did. It was cheap in college. It was PBR. Everybody drank PBR, but. PBR. But so you did have a couple beers and your taste buds changed, which then turned you off even more to alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, I, I mean, I enjoy the non-alcoholic beer more now. So. Yeah. And what benefits have you noticed about yourself mentally and physically since you quit drinking? Uh, I don't know. It's just more like I'm um, more like more in the present moment. Uh, present. That's the key. Yeah. I, I've been. I've watched a well, I watched a lot of your content. I've watched a lot of other uh, people's content about them getting sober. And um, the one, the main thing thing that I can relate to is the what do they call it? The hate anxiety. Anxiety. Oh my where, god. Uh, yeah. Uh, like the one where they're like, um, you message people. I was a big drunk message text messenger, or like I, well, I had more balls when I was drunk. Yeah. And I would post the dumbest shit on Facebook. Yeah. I'd post the dumbest stuff on social media. And it'd always get me in trouble. Like, eventually, my parents just got used to it. But, cool. like, oh, my gosh. I'd wake up in the morning, and the first thing I'd do is I would panic. And I'd get on the social media, and I'd delete everything that I posted. Yeah? Even though I, even though everyone probably saw it, I'd post, I'd, like, oh. I had a throwaway YouTube channel and I would do that all the time. I'd make dumb videos. I'd post them and I'd delete them the next morning. Oh my God. It's just like so stupid. But like, I don't have that anymore because number one, I don't post dumb stuff anymore. Number two, I, I remember everything that I do and everything that I do now has a purpose. Yeah. So it's like, I wake up in the morning and it's just like, it's nice. You know, I don't have to worry about covering my tracks or. Oh, my God. You know. there, like so many phone calls, social media posts, text messages. Yeah. Stuff. And then you end up getting in fights with people like, you know, yeah. you're upset with somebody. Then you start drinking and then the anger comes out and then it just like exasperates everything. Terrible. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I do not miss that. My previous I got so much trouble all the time in my previous job because of it. I left like it was embarrassing from a job because of it yeah it was embarrassing one time the hr department found my secret youtube channel with all my rants it's kind of like they're like you need to stop this i'm like oh my gosh that's so embarrassing this thing like mm-hmm. this sweet this sweet like hr lady who's like the sweetest person saw all that i'm like oh my gosh it's so embarrassing yeah, i uh got really mad i was working at uh i was serving at a place and before the governor even put a mandate out for masks, they decided they were going to. And I was like, oh, hell no. You're not forcing me to wear no, I I didn't like Like, And I said, it's not even a state mandate yet. Like, no. And so I was drunk and then I was in the thread and I was just. Yeah, <laughs> I did so a lot of that. <laughs> and then one of the girls the next morning, she texts or messaged me privately and she was like, girl are you okay and i was like oh crap <laughs> well that was i didn't i didn't agree with any of that sober or not sober i didn't agree with any of that but yeah that got me in a lot of trouble yeah because like one thing that makes you upset while you were drinking and then all the other things that were comp- compounded all come out in one conversation when you're drunk and it's never in like a clean or like clean manner or anything a lot of f-bombs yeah a lot of you know 
It's like B words. Looking, mm-hmm. and then yeah, it's yeah, it's and and then the other thing too is um, I I have a coworker who who's been sober for a long time, I think for like a few decades, and he would always make he would always make a comment like because uh, he was like you, he could smell the alcohol. Oh, so I, I would come into work and he's like, you you were drinking last night, huh? I was like. I'd like, how did you know? He's like, because I could smell it. Oh, that's embarrassing. I would. That was the other thing too. Um, people would start to smell me. Like there was a few times where I'd, I'd show up to the gym and my brother would be like, yeah. It's like, um, does... you've been drinking? I'm like, dude, I didn't drink until I, I was like, the last time I drank was like last night at 10. Oh. It was like, like that's how wasted I'd be. Like the smell would be on me hours. It's even when I think I'm fine, it's like, no, you're not like you're not fine. And when I was personal training, I was in a gym full of LDS, which obviously being from Idaho, you Yeah. Like every time I say I don't drink, I'm like, but I'm not. Yeah. I used to like, joke about that. Everyone who didn't drink, I was like, What are you, Mormon? Yes, ex- <laughs> I worked in a gym full of them, and now I think back and like, gosh, they probably smelled me so many times because yeah. I'm up in their business and I am just hungover, and they don't drink, so obviously they're gonna smell it. And then I'd go sit in the sauna sometimes and like try to sweat it out, and the older ladies would come in, and I was like, I should probably get out of here. <laughs> like, it's embarrassing. It is. It, that's embarrassing. I I thought that was embarrassing. Like thinking. I mean, there'd, there'd be times where I'm thinking, oh, I'm totally fine. Like, didn't drink since, you know, last night at 10 p.m. Totally fine. And someone goes, you smell like beer. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, like, uh. I know people and I can, like, come up and give them hugs. And I'm like, oh, I can just smell like a stale bar floor. Like, yeah. it just is gross to me. But I have, like, I didn't lose my sense during COVID. I uh, probably heightened my sense. But so I can smell things like a mile away and it, I don't like the smell of alcohol anymore at all. I, I just, um, I don't know. It's one of those things where I, I just, I don't know. I, I've been doing it for a long time and I just, I just know like every single time I would go out with friends and drink or like go to a party or go to an event. It just never ended well. Uh, I, I, like every, it was just like one of those funny, I, I look back on it, it's like every time you're like, this is the day where everything's in, like, there's not going to be any drama. And even if there was no drama, you would wake up the next day with a over or you posted something stupid on social media or, or it, it just like, I don't, I don't know. It just, it never felt like it just never would end well no so and like you said i really love how you said you couldn't quit when you were trying to control it and i feel like yeah oh i'm just gonna have one drink tonight just one and then it's like well 10 drinks later yeah and i just don't think that that absolutely works and i love that you brought that up because i think that's something that i don't talk about enough is like controlling your alcohol intake is not gonna help. Well, and then and then there's those there there were those times where I could control it, like I successfully controlled it, but then I felt like crap because one, I wasn't drunk anymore, and two, I was feeling the hangover. So then it was like it still felt like a lose lose because you're like, Well, great, I controlled my drinking, but now I just feel like shit. And then that's what would cause the cycle to go again. Cause then you're like, well, now it's like, I feel like drinking again. Cause I controlled it. Like, yeah. I don't know. How, it's like, no, I like how you say that because that's, I think it's just like a snowball that just keeps yeah. growing. You no. Know? Yeah. Like a huge, huge takeaway from this tonight is you cannot control your alcohol intake and be successful at it. Like there's no way. And even if you do, you just feel like shit because of the hangover. I, I don't know. It's just like, what's my main conclusion? I'm just like, I have to stop drinking. It's not helping me. And it wasn't helping me because my tolerance, my tolerance kept getting higher, higher. Mm-hmm. Like by the time I 
quit that six pack of beer every night wasn't even getting me drunk. It wasn't even getting me drunk. It was just making me feel like crap. Yeah. I would have to say, because you said that you slowly like were cutting back. I, I guess I was slowly cutting back, gearing up for 75 hard because I, I did control it before 75 hard, but then I couldn't have alcohol during 75 hard. So then I wasn't going to fail because of alcohol. Um, so I like cut back. And I would only have like a couple drinks at night instead of getting wasted every night. Yeah. And I think that helped me. It's like, I feel like you have to ease your way into it and yeah, uh, so I would, mind and be done. Yeah. I, me personally, I wouldn't recommend like cold turkey. Well, because one, I, I, you know, the, some people that might be dangerous for them to do. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I remember, remember the week leading up to me quitting, I was doing, um, like when I was going out to drink with my friends, I started having like um, one non-alcoholic beer to every normal beer. So if I had like a six pack, it'd be three non-alcoholic beers and then three normal beers. So what I was doing is I, I would drink one normal beer, then one non-alcoholic beer, one normal beer. And then like that was keeping me sober. I like that. Kind of. Not the- you know, like I would, I would get the, I would get like I would get like the initial buzz from the one beer, but then the non-alcoholic beer would be like that water in between. Yeah. So I was like, so I was able to get like a like, like get that buzz, be satisfied, but then like get sober and get that buzz, and then by the end of it, I was just like, why am I even needing the buzz? Like this is stupid. And then. Yeah, I mean, because it's just the quick. The buzz is just a quick, you know, what what do they say? Dopamine hit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Back down to like all Zero. crushing. Yeah. It. Another thing too, I gotta get this out. I got a I got a breathalyzer. Oh. And um that was really interesting because uh I was this was before I like thought about quitting. It was just kind of for fun, you know? Yeah. And so um that put things into perspective because uh, I'd like blow it. And I'm like, there'd be times where I'd think I'd be good to drive. I'd blow it. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, I'm not good to drive. It was like eye opening. And it was even to the point where I, I'd wake up for work. I'm like, let me just see where it's at. I'd blow it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not even good to go to work. Oh, there's like, so many more. But I would feel completely sober. That's, that was an eye-opening thing. I was like, holy shit, like, I feel like I'm 100% sober, and this thing's telling me, like, I'm over the legal limit. Like, what the hell? Oh, man. So that really, that opened up my mind. I was like, holy cow, like, I wonder how many drunk people are on the road in the mornings uh, that, like, that probably think that they're good to drive when they're not. I think about that all the time. Like, it's, it's insane. So many mornings I should not have, and... I'm like, I'm this, the only one. But these were mornings where I was 100% sure. Like, oh, no, I'm good. Like, I'm completely, I didn't even drink that much last night. I'd blow it. I'm like, what? It's like 0.1. Yeah, I'm like. 0.05. I don't even like, know what legal limits. I think it's uh, I think it's 0. 0.08. That's yeah. that's over the limit. And I, like, I, I'm like, I'm like 0. 0.12? Like, how the fuck am I 0. 0.12? Like, I'm sober. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Like, that's weird. Like, you know. It's, it's so gross to even think like, about. I think, I think, like, that's what really shifted my mind was, uh, like, blowing into this the next morning thinking, like, I'm completely sober and I'm not. Yeah. Like, that was, like, that was, like, the eye opener. I was, like, whoa, that is pretty, like, weird. No. I mean... I thought about getting a breathalyzer several times to see because it's kind of disgusting. Like, you're like, oh, 0. 0.08, that's can't be that much. And then you see all these like cop shows and they're like, 0. 0.18, 0. 0.25. I'm like, yeah, these people should be dead. That was probably me several times. Yeah, no, what, what really surprised me was uh, like, I, I would drink beer, you know, like always. And then I'd just be like, no. Oh. I'd feel fine. Let me just see where I'm at. And sure enough, like, I'd be drunk. What? Like, how? And I know people <laughs> I know people are going to listen to this and comment. So you didn't drive, right? 
you stayed or you got an Uber. <laughs> well, that's the problem though. When you have to go to work, well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's why I stopped drinking because it's like I can't keep doing this, you know. Uh, that last year I got pulled over and uh, I talked my way out of it, out of a speeding ticket. But I knew I was like, you know, um, yeah, I think I, I think I was probably screwed if it had gone any further than that. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, so. You haven't been in trouble with the law for no, but I, I I think I felt like I was, I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of DUI nightmares. Right, great. Right. I think just even having like one beer and then driving always freaked me out. Like, yeah, I'm like I only had one, but I'm still oh. like so terrified. I just I and that's the other thing too. Like I would have nightmares about getting a DUI, and I think that was just. My subconscious is telling me, like, what are you doing? You need to stop doing this. Yes. Uh, before, we, before we wrap up, uh, so the first month of quitting drinking, what did you just keep yourself busy? Like, how did you, besides your mindset, did you just, like, make sure you stayed busy and the N.A. drinks and... Yeah, so I have, um, I have a YouTube channel and I have a lot of, like, I, I mean, I, I have a lot of stuff that I like doing. I have a lot of hobbies. Uh, I love playing. Oh, it was video games. That's what did it. Video uh, games. Yeah. The crazy thing is, is I like video games, but I was getting worse. Uh, I, um, I, I couldn't play video games. I was drunk. So your YouTube was video games. <laughs> well, no, my YouTube. I like making different videos and stuff, but uh, I don't know. I just had a lot of hobbies I just wasn't doing because I was drunk. And then when I gave up the beer, I was like, hey, I have all this free time. Now I can actually start doing stuff that I like. So, yeah, start That's finishing it. I, I've beaten so many video games lately. That's awesome. That I haven't done in a long time. <laughs> And that's what a lot of people tell me or comment like, hey, I got back into this. I got back into that when I quit yeah. drinking. And then it's like, it's funny because we find time for hobbies again. And yeah, I have a lot of free time. Uh, the other thing, too, is I, I've been keeping my house a lot cleaner. So I clean a lot. Yeah. And, and um, it's kind of scary because I. My house was filled with spiders and I didn't even realize it. Like. Because I was drunk the whole time. I didn't realize it. And like I started cleaning and I started noticing spiders everywhere. I'm like, like, how did I not notice this? This is crazy. Ugh. No, no, thank you. I would, uh, we have spider lovers in my house. So um, I'm glad that I don't have very many in my house. Yeah, no, there's, there's no more. There's, I went to like World War Three with spiders in my house. I'm like, start putting traps all over my house. Just like. And it's Black Widows sometimes, too. Yeah, I had a couple of those. Yeah. But um, they're all dead now, so that's good. That's really good. Yeah. No, I've been keeping my house clean. The other weird thing is um, I'm finding that I floss my, I floss my teeth every night because I have more energy to, like, brush my teeth and keep my teeth clean. Yeah. Before then, I didn't even have, I didn't even have the energy to do that because, you know, you'd just be like, I got to pass out. And you just Take pass out. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. My mother in law and I were talking about that the other day. I was like, well, yeah, because she recently stopped drinking. And she's like, I'm washing my face at night again. I'm just like, I started washing my face too. Like, hey, you just have extra, you have extra time to do stuff like that. And not only extra time, but you have energy to do it. It's like, there'd be times when I would floss when I was drunk, but it was just like, Half ass. Half ass. You know, you're just like that's the other thing too. Everything felt half assed when I was drunk. Like it didn't feel Yeah. It didn't feel like there was a purpose to it because you're just well, for one, you probably wouldn't remember it the next day. And then two, you're just kinda like what like just like halfway in, halfway out. That's kind of how it felt like when I was drunk all the time. It just felt everything felt halfway in, halfway out. Kind of like kind of there. But I'm not. Yeah. Like, so you definitely noticed hobbies, better hygiene, better yeah. like cleaning habits. 
better focus too. Just okay. like, yeah, more energy. Uh, like I said, like every like my weekends and my evenings would always just be like I drink beer and that pass out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just but now you're protected. Yeah, it just sucks the energy out of you. And I think and then, a lot of the next day, then the next day at work, you feel like crap because you're just like your only time and focus you have is at work, which is not the fun part of the day. So you feel like your life is wasting away when it's it's the beer and alcohol that's wasting your life away. It's like it's not the like work. Work is work. You know, I show up, do my work, whatever. And then I have all this free time when I get home. Yeah. And a lot of people is like, oh, it's boring if you quit drinking. I'm like, it was actually boring when I was drinking Yeah, anything but drinking. Now I actually have time for doing anything. And it just like. Yeah. I have time to do the things I like to do. I mean, I was that person. I'm like, well, what do I do now that I'm not drinking? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it took me a lot longer because I drank a lot longer than you did in life. But I mean. Yeah, I find myself way more productive and being lazy is because I want to be lazy, not because I'm drinking yeah. now. Yeah, and, I, and I've and i noticed like, um, yeah, you, it, it's weird when, when you hang out with some people who get drunk is you, you know, the, they always say like drunk people always repeat themselves and it's so true. It's, they start repeating themselves and you're like, I know you told me like two minutes ago. The same exact thing. Annoying. Like, oh, annoying. I already heard you. And then they go, no, 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 no. You didn't hear me. I got to tell you it again. You're like, no, I already, I literally heard you. Exactly. You are, you're a lot better than me because I'm like, dude, you get wasted. I'm out. Like, I got to go. Like, I mean, and I, in the drunk person, or I was the drunk person that didn't like drunk people. So now that I'm sober, I don't like drunk people even more. Yeah. Like, and it's so hard because it's like I drank to be able to be around certain people drinking and now I'm not drinking and I'm like, I don't I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want it. And I've yeah, and I've I've never I I was never like into going to the bars or nightclubs or whatever, because all my experiences have been bad. But Oh, I wasn't a bar goer either. Yeah. I I remember in my twenties, me and my friend were always there was a point in time where kept going to downtown Boise thinking like this is gonna be the night and it always ended pet it always ended like terribly it's oh yeah I think I've been down I remember one time drinking and it was not a problem yeah it's just like I, I I remember the last time I ever went to downtown Boise I I drank that night and I was so proud of myself because I stuck to PBR beers so I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm like blackout drunk and I only spent 30 bucks. I'm like, hell yeah. Like not expensive, but like cheap night, you know? Yeah. Well, I Ubered us back to Nampa when, uh, when all the bars closed. It's not, <laughs> and so the next morning I look, I'm like, I look at my bank account. I'm like, what? like, what is this 195 bucks from? And it was this surge charge. From the Uber from Boise to Nampa, and I was like, "Oh my God!" I spent like two hundred bucks getting back home, and that was like, "I'm like, I'm never going to Boise." <laughs> and, <laughs> no, I lost my wallet down there. One oh, they sat with a friend, and my husband was not pleased with me. We ended up actually getting my wallet back, but it was um at a it was at Amsterdam, I think, and. Oh. And the people are like, you're lucky. This doesn't usually happen, getting your wallet yeah. back. But I had, like, my military ID in there, which was what we were freaking out about the most. But, oh, my gosh, it was, like, two days of just, like, panic because I didn't know where my wallet was. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's the other thing, too, is I noticed, like, I remember where everything's at. Yeah. Er- like, every single morning, I'd forget, like, where I would put my phone or I'd forget where I should <laughs> put wallet, keys. Or like I I would be drunk and I didn't realize like my keys fell into like sofa or something yeah. or and then like it'd be a random Wednesday morning and be like, <laughs> like I'd be running around my house where are my keys I'm like late to work because I can't find my keys <laughs> just just dumb stuff like that you and know oh my like, gosh 
the, the, nobody realizes that alcohol does make it's the little things really keep adding up and it does it's just is so detrimental to us that like i mean i i look at it i look back at it it's like just or, or losing your wallet or losing your keys like one of those two things could make or break your day sometimes like yeah especially you don't have like, a spare key you lose your keys then you're late to work and then because you're late to work you you know i don't know it just starts like it maybe you get in a car wreck because you're racing to work or something and it's just like one thing leads to another all because you got drunk the night before and you forgot where your keys were <laughs> very good point i mean oh my gosh hey y'all let me get my wallet because there is one thing hang on Hang on, let me show you this, because this would happen to me all the time when I was drunk. So, so here's here's my wallet, right? Well, I would get drunk, and I I would put my ID into this pocket uh, right here. Yeah. And so, by the way, this is old. I need to throw this. I need to throw this out. That's that's so pretty fun. <laughs> that's pretty fun. But yeah, but I would open up my wallet the next day. I'd be like. I would have like the biggest panic attack. I'm like, where the fuck? And one time, like, I was on vacation and we went to like all the bars to oh, try to find my. Turned out, I freaking I put it. it... Yeah, I I mean I've done stupid so stuff stupid. too, and then you panic, and then it's like, oh, it's been here the whole time. And that would happen on just like normal nights out, where like you didn't think you got that drunk. You know, you're like you're in a relaxed state, and you're just like, oh, they're, they're not paying attention. Yeah. And the one thing, I don't have to bring my ID with me anymore because yeah. I would, like, now I just leave my wallet and, like, like Jonathan just you, has his wallet on him and I don't have to bring my anything. And before yeah. I would have to make sure I brought my own debit card so I could go get my own drinks and my ID because, you know, obviously getting carded. And now I don't have to worry about any of that. And I'm like, that's that's another freeing thing is I don't have to pack extra crap because I don't have yeah. to worry about drinking anymore. And um, not only that, but, like, I go to Albertsons, and they have, like, the self-checkout, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, now I don't even have to wait for the cashier yep. to, like, ID check me. And, oh, my gosh, that, you don't realize how much of a pain in the butt that was until you stopped drinking. Because, like, you're, you're just like, oh, dude, I could be in and out. Like, you don't even have to wait on someone. Because you'd buy a pack of beer, and you sit, well, I still experience it because they still ID you with the non-alcoholic beer. But, like, uh... Like I, the once a week when I had to buy it, stand it like this guy isn't like he's standing there talking to someone, and then you have to like go out of your way to get them to come over, and they but, have to be nineteen before they yeah or they, <laughs> get the, if you get the high school crowd, then you're being yeah. longer. Yeah, and I'm just like yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So there's a lot of times where I'm going grocery shopping. I don't need to buy any of that. And it's just in and out. Don't even have to worry about it. It's so awesome. Uh, Yeah, I get carded some medicines that I buy. And I'm like, Houston an X. It's like, yeah. why do I have to get carded for this? But, but it's, funny, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, about a year ago, I remember I, I went to Walmart, like went grocery shopping and stuff. And um, the cashier was like under 21. 19. Yeah. So she had to get someone who was 21, right? And so it took about 10 minutes. The The lady comes in, and she's like, oh, I'm a new employee. So she didn't even know how to like work the cash register. So then she had to go find another employee. So it was like double whammy. So it was like a 20, it's like, swear, a 20-minute wait to just get go. this. Yes, just for beer and some groceries. And by the time it was all said and done, I was like, thank you. Grab my beer, grab like a bag, got home, and I realized I forgot the other bag of groceries. <laughs> oh <laughs> my then? god! So then I had, I went back to Walmart, and they're like, "Yes, yeah, sir, that that bag's all gone. You're gonna have to like reshop. You're gonna have to like not rebuy it, but you're basically gonna have to like go pick it up again and then check it out free. So <laughs> like reshop for half the stuff I like forgot." That's annoying. And that day, I blamed it on the beer. I'm stupid. Well, oh, I blamed it. Okay. I blamed it on the cashier, but now I look back at it, I'm like, that was... It was beer's fault. Yeah, it was I beer's did, fault. 
I got to the point where I started uh, making sure I wasn't going to those young kids. <laughs> yeah. I was going to just let me call my manager. I'm like, dude. I mean, and we're, yeah. and you can sell it at 18, but in Idaho, it's older. And I'm like. But it's just another one of those stupid things. You know, you don't even have to worry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's been an hour and 11 minutes. Okay. But no, I I appreciate you coming on. I mean, I could literally talk for another hour probably. Yeah. But my editor gets really mad at me. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've done a couple two-hour podcasts. And he's like, I have to. You have to figure out which parts you want. And I'm like, I want all of it. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I appreciate you coming on. And maybe in like another three months, yeah. have you on again for like six, your six month check-in? Check-in. Yeah, right? sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love watching people's journeys and getting that, like seeing how far they come from, you know, month two, three, six, a year. But I mean, it's no, I, I've been, I've been, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and there's a lot of, there's a few channels that I'm hooked on. And, um, there's this one guy, I don't know if you know him, uh, what's his YouTube channel name or something really stupid. It's like something like sauce is the boss or something. What? I don't know. But it's like this guy, he, he journey, he journaled his sober process for like, like an entire, like two years, every single day. Oh, wow. And like he started off fat, and then like by like year two, he's like all buff and ripped and stuff. And it's like insane. <laughs> like I don't know. Like is so I don't know. It's kind of kind of crazy. It is. It's life changing. <laughs> yeah, it it definitely is. But um, keep up. You know the good work, and I mean maybe we'll uh, get some bodybuilding tips from you soon. <laughs> yeah. Or well. I just want to get better at cross. <laughs> so, well, now you're on your way. So, yep. <laughs> well, I appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And yep. I'm sure I'll chat with you soon. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye.